Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurophysician from Rajamandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic the blood supply of the visual pathway the blood supply of the visual pathway the ophthalmic artery which is a branch of internal carotid artery enters the optic nerve one centimeter posterior to the globe where it becomes the central retinal artery the central retinal artery supplies the entire retina very important the central retinal artery supplies the retina the central retinal artery does not supply optic disc or macula the central retinal artery supplies only the retina because this becomes very important when we try to understand the concept of cherry red spot so the central retinal artery only supplies the retina there is no supply to the macula or optic nerve head in case it is there it is a very very minimal contribution so what artery supplies the optic nerve head or the optic disc the other terminal branches of the ophthalmic artery that is the short posterior ciliary arteries and choroidal vessels form an arterial network the circle of Zinn and Heller which supply the disc. So the disc is supplied by the posterior ciliary arteries and choroidal vessels and macula is also supplied by the choroidal vessels. So optic disc or macula they are not supplied by the central retinal artery they are supplied by the short posterior ciliary arteries and choroidal vessels because it's an important concept when we try to understand the cherry red spot because of the central retinal arterial occlusion another important concept is that the optic tract and the lateral geniculate body usually they do not get affected when there is insufficient blood supply because they have a redundant and enormous blood supply coming from two arteries one the anterior choroidal artery from the internal carotid artery and the thalamoperforators from the posterior cerebral artery. Because of the redundant blood supply to the optic tract and the lateral geniculate body coming from the two arterial groups, one the anterior choroidal artery from the internal carotid artery and two the thalamoperforators from the posterior cerebral artery, the optic tract and the lateral geniculate body are rarely affected by ischemia again an important concept perhaps because of this redundant blood supply vascular disease only rarely affects the optic tract or lateral geniculate body then from the lateral geniculate body we come to the optic radiations the superior and the inferior the mayus loop receives blood supply from the inferior division of the middle cerebral artery whereas the optic radiations in the parietal loop are perfused by the superior division of the middle cerebral artery. So the Mayes loop receives blood supply from the inferior division of the middle cerebral artery whereas the optic radiation in the parietal loop are perfused by the superior division of the MCA. The occipital lobe is supplied primarily by the posterior cerebral artery. The collaterals from the anterior cerebral artery and middle cerebral artery may provide additional perfusion to the macular areas at the occipital tip accounting for macular sparring. This is also another important concept. The occipital lobe gets affected but then there is usually macular sparring. Why is the macular area spared? Because macular area unlike the other visual cortex is not only supplied by the posterior cerebral artery but it gets additional collaterals from the anterior cerebral artery and middle cerebral artery and therefore macula rarely gets affected and therefore macula is spared. So this is the explanation for macular sparing. 
it gets applied not only from the post cerebral artery but also from the anterior cerebral artery and middle cerebral artery so summarizing all the points which i just discussed the retina is supplied by the central retinal artery so when there is a central retinal artery occlusion the retina gets affected but not the macula and therefore we have the cherry red spot the optic disc is supplied by the terminal branches of the ophthalmic artery known as the circle of zinn and heller the short posterior ciliary arteries the choroidal vessels and very very little contribution if at all any from the central retinal artery so central retinal artery primarily supplies the retina whereas the po posterior ciliary arteries and choroidal vessels supply the optic disc next as we come backwards the optic chiasma they are supplied by the small perforators from the circle of willis the optic tract and lateral geniculate body are rarely affected by ischemia because they have a redundant blood supply these are supplied by these are supplied by two arterial two arteries the optic tract is supplied by the anterior choroidal artery which is a branch of internal carotid artery and thalamo perforator branch which is a branch of the posterior cerebral artery likewise the lateral geniculate body is also supplied by the anterior choroidal artery but this time the thalamo geniculate branch of the posterior cerebral artery because of this redundant blood uh, redundant blood supply optic tract and lateral geniculate body are rarely affected optic radiations in the parietal lobe are supplied by the superior division of the middle cerebral artery whereas optic radiations in the temporal lobe meiosis tube are supplied by the inferior division of the middle cerebral artery the entire occipital lobe is supplied by the posterior cerebral artery but the macula the macular area at the occipital tip is not only supplied by the posterior cerebral artery but also collaterals from the anterior and middle cerebral artery the additional perfusion and therefore macula is rarely affected resulting in the concept of macular sparing so when the posterior cerebral artery gets affected the entire occipital cortex gets affected but it spares the macular area known as macular sparing macula is responsible for central vision and therefore patients will have a tubular vision the entire cortex gets affected because of the post cerebral artery involvement so entire visual area gets affected but the central area which is because of the macula is spared because of the additional blood supply from the anterior cerebral artery and middle cerebral artery and therefore the central vision is spared which is known as the tubular vision these are the important concepts of the blood supply of the visual pathway hope you have enjoyed it if you have liked it please subscribe to my youtube channel dr sinos medical concepts and my fb page dr sinos concepts and do also buy my book focus neurology which is available online from all leading booksellers including amazon so this is the book focus neurology thank you bye